Hello, everyone, and a warm welcome back to all the participants. So, participants, what are we learning for today? In the previous sessions, you have seen how DevOps based CI CD pipelines have a role to play in releasing your application involving various stages like uh, version control, continuous integration, build, test, image building, hacker, Terraform provisioning. So these are open source products that we have been using. We have been using heavily the open source products. And there was one tool that we have been very much using, which is Terraform that we have used. Now Terraform is an open source product. So AWS wanted to go ahead and provide similar services, what Terraform does by providing their proprietary service, like targeting the idea of targeting the idea of infrastructure as code. So participants, now it's time for us to explore infra as code in AWS. That is, I'll go ahead and look for the infrastructure as code. And participants, without any surprise, you will end up in cloud formation. So participants, cloud formation is a very outstanding service from AWS cloud. And this is one of the widely used services in AWS cloud when it needs, when services are to be handled via code. In a nutshell, organizations prefer either Terraform to the max, if it is an open source, or they would be preferred, they show preference towards cloud formation in handling the resources. Like Terraform does go ahead and create an instance. Just a simple example. Terraform does go ahead and create an instance by writing the Terraform. Cloud formation also does the same thing by writing a piece of code. Now for this, you don't need to learn any programming language. A very simple JSON or a YAML file is required to be written in the form of a template. That template is given against the cloud formation and the cloud formation in response to the given template, it will go ahead and create a stack for you. So AWS cloud formation, it is gonna help you to model and provision all your cloud infrastructure. How? AWS cloud formation provides a common language and describe and provision all of the infrastructure in your environment in a safe and repeatable mode by turning your code that is written in a JSON or a YAML file. That means you write your infrastructure, you code your infrastructure using the cloud formation template. That means you will write a template, you will create a template. In that template, you code your infrastructure and the YAML or a JSON file gets written. Using that as a template, you go ahead and create a stack. So basically then what is a stack? The output that you get to see after you run your template is what is called stack. A stack is nothing but a collection of resources that you have created. I wanted to go ahead and create an instance. Instance creation is done. You got an output along with that instance, you got or basically you have written a template for an instance, you got an instance. That's what is basically a stack. The output resources that you get, the collected, the collection of resources that you get when you run a template, we call it a stack. Participants, now I'm sure most of you might have understood now cloud formation because I gave you the reference of Terraform. But to make it more interesting to make it more clear for all of you participants let me demonstrate to you point by point and then you'll understand 
how powerful is Terraform or CloudFormation? So participants, it all gets started by creating a stack. You all need to go ahead and create a stack. A stack, as you know, it's an output that you'll get. This output is only possible when you pass an input in the form of a JSON or a YAML template. For this, we need a template to be ready. So right now, I don't have any template. If you look at the preparation of the template, every stack is based on a template. A template is a JSON or a YAML file that contains configuration about the resources that you want to include, you want to create. So participants, let's go ahead and get the template ready. So as of now, I haven't written any template. So let me just go ahead and write a template. Now participants, from here, it is very, very interesting, very, very important for you. Now, as a DevOps engineer, you will come across a lot of scenarios where you have to go ahead and provision the resources using the programmatic way of getting things done or writing a, a cloud formation template. So how to start and where to start? Participants, everyone starts from scratch. Now, if you have to go ahead and write from scratch, how do you do that? Participants, do not worry. Writing cloud formation templates is not tough, but if you have a very clear picture of what you want to create, you can create any cloud formation template. Let me help you out, participants. What I want is cloud formation. So participants, when you're starting to write your own cloud formation templates, you can follow this process. The process goes something like this. Go to AWS documentation. This is how you, you have to start. Navigate to AWS documentation. After that, you have to be visiting the page cloud formation. Hit the HTML page. And from there, you go ahead and hit sample templates. The sample templates comprises of this templates that you are looking for or maybe closer to your requirements. Most of the time it will fit. Now pick the region right now. I am using most of the time Ohio as a region. There are various categories, sample solutions, frameworks, and services. Let's remain in services page. Under that, you get to see something called AWS EC2 because I said I want to go ahead and create an instance. So I am very specific about an instance creation. That's it. With this, I will be able to fetch a sample template that can help me to provision an instance. For those participants who did not get what I've done, let me do it one more time for you. How normally I start? AWS documentation, I'll pick up. I'll navigate to AWS documentation. I'll go to the cloud formation. I'll visit the HTML page. I scroll down to sample templates because I'm looking for sample templates. I consider the region right now. Ohio region, where is Mumbai, Singapore, Tokyo, Central, Beijing, Frankfurt, London, then Northern Virginia, Ohio region. I'm very specific on the sample services. Sorry, services, not sample solution, services. And very specific on EC. That is my log. That is my way of connecting to start. Now, what is the template name? The name of the template is Amazon EC2 instance inside a security. That means he is creating an instance. Also, he's creating a security. Why? Security group, as you all know, that firewalls are written specific to that instance. So he's considering the security group. 
So let's look out the template. Click view, it opens up another tab. See, the code is very much ready made. Plenty of code. So what I'll do participants, I'll pick this raw code. Okay. And I go ahead and submit into my notepad because I want to go ahead and use this code. What I'll do, I'll go ahead and save this. Now I know it's a JSON code. So I'll go ahead and give a name that is stack for EC2 instance dot JSON file. A name because any name is okay. You can give any name. I just gave name. And the extension, be sure about it because it's a JSON file. You can clearly see it's a JSON text. And roughly about 435 lines of code is written. I'll assure you people, I'll write, I'll modify this code in less than 40. In Like, you know, I'll modify this entire code less than within 40 lines. Stay and watch out for people what I'll do for you. So participants, this is a very lengthy code. And there are a lot of format spaces in it. So what I normally do after this format, I use an editor, like a formatter for taking out the spaces, giving a format, formatters, JSON formatters, publicly available. You can go ahead and hit any page, any formatter is okay. What I do is I pick this code, and paste the code here. Uh, after pasting the code, I format it. So I get a well formatted code on the other side. I pick this code and replace this code. Now it has turned out to 586. After formatting, it has now become 586 lines. Everyone, are we ready participants? Everyone, are we good? Have you understood now how to get started from scratch? Everyone, are we good? Yes, cool. Now, what I'll do is I'll start taking blocks. This block, this block, this block, which is parameter block, mapping block, instance block, archive block, block for mapping, resources that involve EC2, instance type, resource block, instance ID, AZ, Block, DNS, public IP, and output. Now, participants, see, it's minimal code you can view at one place. Now, this is how a template looks like. A sample template will look like. This is how a sample template looks like. And what are the different blocks that you have to memorize? Now, it's not that you have to memorize everything, but you can relate that. These are the expected blocks that you should have. Template version, description, parameters, mappings, resources, and the output. These are the different blocks that you can get in each and every template. You normally get to see these are the different kind of blocks that you get to see in a template. Everyone, are we good? Participants, are we good? So you generally get a template version, description of it, parameters involving it, mappings involved in it, resources involving in it, outputs. Is that very general? Most of the template have this. Participants, everyone, are you with me, people? Hello? Did you understand what is this template is all about? This is actually the template inside which these are the different blocks we have. Template, format version. Description, parameters, mapping, resources, and output. You have any questions here? Are we good to get started to explore this? Participants, are we good? Participants, may I proceed further? Hello, are you are you are you there, participants? Yes. Welcome. Now, participants, the first thing that you get 
is template portion. Now, the very good thing is template version is optional. Why? Because this template version, template format version has only one value. And this is a default value that you will be, be required to pass. You are required to pass this value. And it's completely optional. Why? Because it's only one value. So by default, if you don't pass this value to a template, AWS will go ahead and take this as your template value and start it. It will not mandate it that, Kumar, you should be passing this value for sure. No, it's not required at all. You don't need to pass that value. So what I'll do, I, if it is not required, I'll remove it. If you want to pass it, pass it. This is the only value you'll find in most of the standard templates. I feel this is not required. I'm happily removed if it is not required. Everyone, are you with me, people? Hello? Participants, are we good? Now, following the footsteps, when you go into the next block, which is description, as the name itself tells that it is a description about your template, what is this template is all about. That means by now you should have guessed Kumar, I think description is also optional. Yes, what is your understanding is right. Description is also optional. It's up to you. Now, instead of writing that lengthy description, template comma, that creates Instances, instance, and security. It does create an instance and a security. That's simple, it is. A simple, creates an instance or creates very specifically EC2 instance and security group associated with it. Now, if you want to continue, please, if you want, remove it. But it is a good practice because the other person, whoever is using this template, will get to know what is this template is all about. So it is good that if you write it. Now comes up parameters. Means parameters as a name suggests these are the parameters that are being passed into your template. That means when the template is passed, these values are to be passed. Now think and visualize a context. If there are no parameters to be passed in a scenario where there are no parameters to be passed, then parameters also are required to be optional. I don't want to make it mandate. Everyone are able to relate? See, in this scenario, he's saying I have certain parameters that involve key name, that involve instance type, that involve SSH location. That means these are, he has, the one who has authored this template has kept in mind that there are some parameters that are to be passed into a template. So keeping that as a reference, he has, he might have given this. Now imagine another scenario from your side that if there is a template that needs to create a simple bucket, should we pass some parameters or think about such parameters Think about such templates where there are no parameters at all. That means parameters are also optional by this logic. The answer is yes. Even parameters are optional. Now, if you want to keep parameters, keep them. What are the parameters he has kept? He has kept parameter about the key name. What is key name? That means what kind of key would you like to use when you provision an instance? Oh, is that simple? So what is that key name that you want to pass? Key name equal to. You'll get an option, a drop down menu. Because of the parameters, it will ask you. It will ask you, can you select or select one of the key out of the keys that you have? Kumar, if I know my key pair, should I need to pass the parameter? 
not required you can even hard bound it now we'll do one thing is then we'll just keep this discussion of parameter little aside why because it's interesting as well as confusing so what we'll do we'll just keep this aside now we have something called mapping the name itself saying that it does map something for you what is that mapping now it maps the architecture that you're looking for the type of the instance that you're looking for and the ami now if i go ahead and open one by one it is giving me the reference of instances that i have to choose oh any size as see m c x my god we don't use these many sizes so let's keep very very minimal sizes minimal sizes means all the t sizes will keep only t sizes will keep otherwise uh, after that we don't because we don't need all these sizes we don't use these sizes only t sizes t to dot large till i get same way we will only continue t sizes so what does this block of mapping is doing you'll get to know in a minute so we will not going to be using anything about than this so it will ask you what is your type of instance that you want to use you want to use t1 micro t2 micro t3 micro t2 dot small whichever the sizes that you want to use from those sizes it will go ahead and consider the region and see that participants if you go ahead and consider the location and as part of the location it will go ahead and identify the ami that you want so finally you are choosing an ami and participants for your information we are only using us east 2 and we are using an ami now let's go ahead and check is this ami is that we have been using for our previous instances let's go ahead and confirm it so have an instance which is not in running state yet i can look at the features of that instance and let's confirm control f i think we have been using another instance so why should we go and use another ami we can use this ami also you can use this ami or you can use this ami that means both of the amis are support so participants ultimately mapping is going to a point where it will go and choose the size of the instance the region and then it'll end up in the location which is giving me an ami id if ami id is already known why should i go ahead and you know spend time in doing all this this is the ami id i'll pass i'll just pass this ami id as an input or you can go ahead and use your packer ami which you have provision even that is possible for now to make it easier for you to start let's not use mapping i'll just remove entire mapping block itself because i know what kind of ami i have to pass i know my ami everyone are you with me people hello participants i have removed the entire block of mapping why mappings are already giving me which i know mapping is going to go ahead and map which instance that i'm going to be using it is going to go ahead and map to which region i'm going to be using finally it gives me ami which i already know that this is the ami id if i have to use why should i go ahead and look at the map so that is the reason i just skip that entire block of mapping that means mapping is also optional everyone are you with me people hello participants are you with me participants everyone are you with me yes ma'am mapping is also optional because mapping will by by the time that i use mapping what i will get from the mapping ami id i know my ami id 
why should i go ahead and invest my time on such lengthy process now resources participants the name itself says it is going to go ahead and provision resources for you participants can you guess how many resources are going to be provisioned by this resource column if you look at the resource block how many resources are expected to be created how many resources can you see right now one yes one is instance and the one is security security now the name is given as ec2 and the name is given as instance security so participants this is because you know that there you are creating an instance but if you don't know go and give a name called r1 go and give a name called r2 resource 1 and resource 2 i'm creating two resources but the problem is r1 is known for you that you are creating an instance but the system doesn't so you have to go and tell to the system hello system cloud formation i'm actually creating a resource r1 which is of type instance same way system i'm creating a resource with the name called r2 which is of type what security group everyone are we good at this moment hello participants are we good participants are we good now under the resources tab i have to create one resource r1 or i am creating resource r1 which is of type instance cool another resource r2 which is of type security clear participants are we good are we clear so participants do you have any questions for me okay if no questions let me proceed so let's focus on first r1 resource only so i know i am creating resource r1 which is type of instance so r1 type of that instance is aws underscore ec2 underscore instance but every instance has its own set of properties every security group will have its own set of ingress and outgress every resource will have its own properties after the type you will focus on properties so what kind of properties will an instance have ami size of the instance volume security groups key pairs then instance launch so participants at this moment these are the references or the properties that the author have taken into consideration what he has taken into consideration image id key name security groups and instance type these are the standard properties that author has taken into his template so participants what is the image id should i use here what is the image id should what is meant by image id image id means ami that is the id of your ami so in this process if you haven't use your ami what the system will do system will go ahead and search which region are you in because of this reference it will go ahead and find in the mapping what is the type of instance t2.micro t2.large and finally it will go ahead and give you the image id that is what i have been telling that this is a very lengthy process it will go ahead and identify the ami why should i go ahead and spend time on getting this ami id when i know my ami id is already with me so i what i'll do i'll take the hard bound value and place the ami id that simple it is everyone are we clear hello participants are we clear participants are we clear this is the ami id i know is going to be used 
So I place the AMI. Next from there, we have something called key name. Key name means key pair. What key pair you want to use? So let me go ahead and check what are the key pairs that I have. I have a couple of key pairs. Yeah, one, two, three key pairs. I want to go ahead and use this key pair, AWS KP. When I know this is a key pair, why should I go ahead and give it as a reference? That simple it is, AWS KP. What is the security group that you want to attach to this instance? Has given a security group, which is referring the instance security group. Is there anything called instance ref reference security group at this moment? The answer is no. It is now referred as R2. Ref means the function. Referencing what? A resource R2. F means, Fn means function. Cool. What is after the security group? Instance type. Reference instance type. Where is this instance type? It's actually sitting in parameter. See, this guy is sitting in parameter. Instance type. These are the instance sizes. No, no, no. We don't use these many sizes. So I don't want to go ahead and say instance type equal to reference. Rather, I'll go ahead and give the hard bounded value t2 dot small or t2 dot micro. That's it, participants. This is how you will create an instance. Your resource is done, R1 is done. Now let's focus on R2, which is a security group. So I know this is R2 is a security group. Properties of security group are what? Ingress and outgress. That means ingress means incoming traffic. Egress means outgoing traffic. What are the ports and protocol? Currently, he is having a array that has various security group rules, which is only allowing 22. I will also allow 480, another entry. 22, now 480, from port to 480. Protocol TCP. And then it is asking, what is the CIDR? CIDR mode, from where the request will come? Right now, we have been using internet as the option. Why should I go ahead and give the reference for SSH location? Reference means somewhere in parameter this SSH location. You can see at line number 71, this guy is sitting. Now, what is this reference for this? See the location, entire description he has given, and he's saying default value is already internet. Now, why will I go ahead and give the default value when I know it is already internet? So I'll go ahead and remove this block and say, hey, I will allow the request to happen from internet. I'll allow this happen. Because we have been using internet as a source. So I don't need SSH location. I don't need instance type. I don't need key pair. Nothing. I don't need anything. I don't need even parameters all. I'll remove the parameters also. Everyone, are you able to relate participants? Hello, participants, are we good? Participants, are we good? Why did I go ahead and remove parameters after the resource? Because parameters are up to you. If you want to keep the parameters running, keep them. If you don't want, drop them. So I've dropped the resource parameters. Now I'm focusing only on the resources. Resources, R1 is a resource. R2 is a resource for me. R1 is an instance. Type is instance. R2 is a type of security group. R1 is an instance. R2 is the security group. What are the properties associated with it? Everyone, are we good? Uh, 
participants, just give me a minute. Participants, do you hear me now? Okay. So, our template is focusing on resources, which is R1 and R2. R2 is of type, which is instance. R1 is of type instance. And the second resource, R2, is of type security group. Properties associated with R1 or properties here. Resources, R2, properties are also associated here. Properties of an instance commonly are instance ID, Image ID, we know that image AMI that we are using, key pair, security group, and instance type. For a security group, ingress and outgress, that's it. Now, participants, there is an extra block that will be given to you, which is about outputs. Now, it is up to you. What do you want to do with those outputs? You want an output for an instance ID, refer the instance, refer the instance R1, get the value of your instance ID. Availability, you can get it from a function called FN. FN is function, get ADT, that means get attribute from my EC2. Right now, R1 is the resource, get the availability zone. Likewise, public DNS, public IP, it's up to you. But these are outputs. It's up to you. You want to go ahead and get an output on. I'm not interested in any of these outputs. I'm just focused on getting a very much public DNS. That means it's up to you whether you want to put DNS or whether you want to get an output is up to you. If you don't want to get it, you can drop it. So I want to go to it. If you feel this is important, continue. Otherwise, you can drop it. For me, people, this is an extra piece. I don't want to continue. I'm dropping this. I'm focusing only on the resource. So participants see, if you look at the first code that I've written or copied, Roughly about 500 lines of code. Now, it is being formatted to less than 40 lines of code, as I mentioned in the start of the session. Less than 40 lines of code, I have turned it. But let's see whether this template is functional. See, every code is okay. You can write it in less than 40 lines, but the code needs to be functional. So let me go ahead and save this. Before that, I have the practice to check whether this code is well formatted, cool. It's well formatted. I'm taking the formatted code and pasting back into this. And still it is 38 lines. This is the simplest template that you can expect to provision an instance. Now I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my cloud formation. Think that, hey, cloud formation, the one which you are awaiting for is ready with me. Template is ready. I'm going to go ahead and upload the template for you, which is a YAML template, uh, sorry, which is a JSON template. Participants, I'm assuming there are no errors in the template. If there are any errors, I would be 
halted at this moment at step two only saying that hey your template is not proper but looks like template is good for now so this is my stack that i'm creating an ec2 instance if there were parameters i would have given a choice for the list of parameters right now no parameters cool we are good we can proceed further so this is a page where it will ask you to go ahead and configure your stack options you may over ignore it you don't need to do anything here and then a review page so what does the review will do it is telling you hey i picked your template i'm gonna pick i'm gonna go ahead and store inside an ec2 instance uh, basically it is going to go ahead and create it whatever that we have mentioned as part of the start description it has picked up no parameters nothing so we'll go ahead and do a submission um i did submit and let's wait for a minute or two let this stack get completed Yeah. So now participants, I can see the status of the stack is create underscore complete. That means its completion is done. I have resources R1 and R2. And you guys can see here R1 is about uh, EC2 instance. And it is created. Cool. R2 is a security group we have created. So let's go ahead and explore whether we have been successful in provisioning that instance. Now participants, you can see there is a running instance. That means we are successful. We have been successfully provisioning an EC2 instance. See here, V944, which is provisioned by CloudFormation. And you guys can see here the AMI ID that I have used, Wi-Fi DDF. Wi-Fi DDF. Okay. Thereafter, we did give a uh, security for port 80 and port 22. Participants, are we good now? See, port 80 and port 22. Everyone, are we good now? How to go ahead and provision the stack here? Or a template. A template is all about the input that you give regarding the resources that you want to provision. A stack is an output that you get when you run that template. So for this stack, there should have been a template. This is the template. See here, this has been a template. Everyone, are we good at this moment? Participants? Hello? Do you have any questions for me? Participants, do you have any questions for me? Okay. Now I'll tell you, participants, how companies use this model or how companies get benefited. Let's assume I am your DevOps engineer and you people are working with me. So what I will do, I'll go ahead and write this template that if you want to create an EC2 instance, you can use this template. So what I'll do, I'll write this code and I'll keep it in a version control, like a GitHub repo. What you will do participants in the organization is that when I go ahead and keep this code inside the repo, I go ahead and keep this entire code inside the repo. What you will do from your side, you will go ahead and start cloning the repo at your end. You clone that repo at your end. I am your DevOps engineer. I have written your code for the 
EC2 instance. So what you will do from your side, you will pull this code from the repo and you will run this cloud formation template. The participants tell me, if you run this cloud formation template at your end, will it go ahead and provision an EC2 instance at your end? Will it go ahead and provision an EC2 instance? Will it provision an EC2 instance participants? Yes. The answer is yes, it will provision an instance. Now, what are the benefits for this? Let's say the top management, your project manager wants to see what are the kind of resources you people are creating. The project manager will come and see that what is the resources that you have created. You will tell, dear manager, I did go ahead and use the repo of Kumar. He has given me this code, I ran it, and it created me the resource. That means, if there are 10 people, 10 out of 10 participants in the organization, 10 employees in the organization are following this method of creating the resources. So assume that if two of the employees leave the company, they leave the company also, maybe if a new person coming up in its position, there is a new person coming up into this position, that becomes 11th employee. Participants 11th employee will go and look what all the resources that were created. No, he will not look. He will only look what was the repo that the employee who has left the company has used. What repo he has used? Kumar's repo. That means whether instance provisioning, management, anything is done on the basis of Kumar repo. So Kumar repo is one place for all the needs. So whether you are in the company or not, you are leaving the company, company will not have any impact. Why? Because everything is written by the DevOps engineer. DevOps engineer has written the code. So using the DevOps engineer code, you have provisioned the resources. Are you able to relate this situation participants? Hello? So participants in the company, you have provisioned the resources. How did you provision? Using Kumar Sri, where easy to instant method is already there. So if you are there or not there, still it is very much clear that you people are gonna use repo. So assume that if you are a DevOps engineer, you will start contributing to the organization, writing vital cloud formation templates. We'll start participants from here. We'll start everything from here, from scratch. Now participants, there is another logic that we have seen. It also supports YAML, right? Now I'll give you a very, very simple and easiest trick that you will be thankful for me. What I do when I have a template, I go ahead and use converters. I convert JSON to YAML. Convert JSON to YAML. Why it is not opening up this? Mm -hmm. What I do, I just go ahead and turn this JSON to YAML. That's all. Convert this JSON to YAML. Yep. I have the YAML code with me. I go ahead and save this as fact hyphen create or EC2 instance. This time it's YAML. Why YAML? Resources, under the resources, R1 is a resource, R2 are the resource, under resource, there is a type of resource, properties associated with the resource, R2 properties associated. Now what I normally do from here, one more time I will go and run another stack, create a stack. This time 
I'm uploading the template, which is a YAML template now. First, adjacent template, now a YAML template. Pull, it has accepted. So this is a YAML hyphen template for stack that I want to create for EC2 hyphen instance. This is the name that I put. Right now, no parameters. Review. Submit. Isn't that cool, participants? JSON method, you know. YAML method, you know now. That simple it is. So, participants, it's the DevOps engineer who will write the templates. And the other employees in the organization will refer these to these templates to provision the resources. That means every employee in the company will follow this method of provisioning the resources. So what happens tomorrow if a new employee will come? He will also refer to the same template. That means everyone in the process, they follow the same method. What is that same method? Template. They will follow the template method of provisioning the resources. If we are clear enough participants, can I have a quick round of confirmation from all of you people? Even this has worked out, has created a resource, another instance, this scenario. So participants may have a quick round of confirmation from all of you participants regarding this cloud formation now. What is that we have done? We have taken the infrastructure that we need, whatever the infrastructure we need, we turn that infrastructure into code. So this is our YAML code. This is our JSON code. Participants, I would request you guys to practice this using an S3 bucket. You guys go ahead and create your own S3 bucket using cloud formation. That is an assignment for you. You guys can practice. Because S3 bucket is not going to be charged for you. So you can create. Now, another interesting thing is, after this, if you go ahead and delete this stack. What will happen? It will go ahead and delete your resources also. It's basically management it is done, right? So if you're deleting, it will go ahead and delete the resources. Like Terraform, if you go ahead and allow it to destroy, it will destroy your resources. Like cloud formation will destroy your resources. So participants, have you been able to establish today what is the context of cloud formation, everyone? Hello, participants? Yes, Kumar. So will you go ahead and do a practice for a simple S3 bucket creation today by yourself using cloud formation? Participants, will you practice a simple cloud formation instance for cloud formation using cloud formation in S3 bucket? Okay, cool. Thank you, participants.